Okay, welcome back. So today we shall continue from our last discussion. So yesterday, you know, the last class we had discussed about uh, drift and diffusion equations of current. We told that there are the two major components. Uh, drift happens because of field and diffusion happens because of concentration gradient. We derived their formula and equations. We also had before that, you know, we had discussed about your electron mobility, hole mobility, how scattering affects them, right? Uh, and also the velocity, high field and low field regime. So hope everything is, you know, now clear and familiar with you. And once we know the concepts of mobility and velocity, we are able to understand the drift and diffusion equation. Please remember that all the devices eventually will be mostly based on diffusion and drift current only. And that's why it is very important that we understand them. So today we shall introduce another thing, it's called continuity equation. And before that, I shall, you know, go through something like recombination, called recombination and generation. Uh, we shall also understand why they are important and, you know, in a real material system, recombination is very important. Uh, just because there is drift and diffusion, we do cannot exclude the importance of uh, things like recombination, okay. So now we will come to the whiteboard and we will continue from where we left behind in the last class, okay. So you see in the last class, we had discussed about drift and diffusion equation, right. I told you that drift and diffusion equation uh, depends on the slope of the carrier profile, uh, the, the diffusion equation, right, uh, the electron and hole diffusion and the drift current does not depend on that, you, if you remember drift current you know was purely field dependent so that is for electron it is q mu n which is actually conductivity times the field okay so mu is mobility right so uh, drift and diffusion current um, they actually have a relation you know in in uh, I'll, I'll come to that very quickly in that that you know uh, this this diffusion coefficient that you see here dp for holes or dn for electron these are diffusion coefficient uh, that are dependent on the material uh, but actually these are related to uh, this conductivity also, we will see that how, okay. So once we see that, we will understand that a higher diffu diffusion current also means that drift current could be higher, okay. So today we shall, uh, you know, discuss, first we will come to something called Einstein relation, okay, Einstein relation. See Einstein not only uh, had worked on relativity and gravity, but also there is a very important relation of Einstein in your uh, semiconductor devices actually, okay. So suppose I take a, 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 a sort of a material where both drift and diffusion current are basically going to balance each other, okay. Suppose there is no net current flowing, so diff, drift and diffusion current are going to balance each other so that there is no net current flowing and I will, for simplicity take, I will only take an n-type dope material of, there is only one type of carrier, say electron. So let us imagine. Uh, an equilibrium situation where there is no current flowing, okay. An equilibrium situation when there is no current flowing, which means the Fermi level is constant, okay. A constant Fermi level means that it is equilibrium, there is no current flowing. But there has to be drift without applying field, for example. So there has to be a slope in the conduction band or the valence band. So what I will do is that I will put conduction band something like this, a slight slope is there. And a valence band also has to have the same slope because the band gap is the same. Everywhere the band gap is same. Conduction, oh sorry, this is um, valence band. So you see, this is actually in equilibrium. There is no current flowing because Fermi level is constant. Fermi level is constant. Okay, but there is a slope in conduction band. Because of this slope, you know, it, there is a field. So where is the which direction is the field? I told you a very a very simple way to understand where field is. You assume that there is an electron here. And think of it like as a ball or a marble that is rolling down a slope. So it will roll down this way, no? So electrons will move this way, which means the field is in this direction. Okay, the field is in this direction. So there is a field here, but this is equilibrium. Now, because there is a field in this direction, it will try to push the electrons this way. In other words, the electrons will try to roll downhill because of drift. But this is a this is an equilibrium, so the Fermi level is constant, right? Uh, so, if the electrons are drifting uh, this way, then there will be a current, no? but there is no current, which means there is an exact opposite component. There is an exact opposite component which is balanced by, you know, the diff diffusion current. An exact value of the drift current will be balanced by diffusion. So, diffu electrons will try to diffuse from this point to that point. Why? Because you see, if I remove this thing here and make it a little bit more clear here. The Fermi level and conduction band spacing, I told you, EC minus EF, this spacing tells you how many electrons are there or how heavy the doping is, okay. So you see on the left side, this spacing, this one, 
is small on the right side this spacing is more ec minus ef is more since ec minus ef is very less here in other words the fermi level is very close to the conduction band it means here there are more electrons right there are more electrons okay and because this ec minus ec spacing is large here maybe here it is 0.1 ev maybe here it is 0.3 ev right that's why it's bigger and it's increasing very slowly like a linearly you know every at any point it is increasing it's not abrupt increase okay it's a in, in smooth increase so here at this part you know the electron concentration is less because your ec minus ef is more remember this is this is what determines that and of course as i go from you know uh, left to right actually the electron concentration is gradually decreasing right electron concentration is gradually decreasing electron concentration is gradually decreasing right because it is linearly changing right it's gradually decreasing okay good so in this case electrons will try to diffuse from left to right and electrons will try to drift from right to left because of the field so they will balance each other and eventually no current will flow eventually it is basically an equilibrium situation that's why the like formula level is constant okay so let me draw it again okay I'll draw it again. So I have the Fermi level here, okay, and I have the conduction band like that, and the valence band like that. It's still an n-type semiconductor, by the way, because Fermi level is above the mid gap. You know, the mid gap will be here. So it's not a curved line; it's a straight line completely. This is your intrinsic level. This is your conduction band. This is your valence band. So the it's it's n-type. It's more n-type this side, okay and less n type this side that you know now right how can you get this kind of a structure you know you can get this kind of a structure if your doping is gradually decreased from left to right while you are doping the semiconductor in the fabrication unit if you decrease the doping gradually from left to right then you know it will this spacing will basically keep increasing okay that is how it is happening okay now in this situation I told you the net current is 0, so the drift current has to be equal to diffusion current which means the diffusion current is Q dn because it is electron dn by dx. This n is a function of x, why? Because if you look back into the previous diagram here, at any point x here, sorry, at any point x, if I take this x is equal to 0, that at any point x here, the electron concentration depends on x because this gap is increasing gradually, right. So, how will you capture that? You remember n, this is a, a moderately doped semiconductor, n is equal to nc exponential of ef minus ec by k, this is Boltzmann constant kt. Now, at any point, at every point, nc is constant because this depends on effective mass and temperature, which is the same. Okay? Fermi level is also constant everywhere, what is not constant is ec. You see the EC is not constant because it is changing. So I can write N of X at any point is equal to NC exponential of okay, EF minus EC of X by KT this thing. Okay? Because EC of X is changing, EC of X is changing, of course EV of X is also changing, EF is not changing, EI is changing. Okay? If you remember this, okay, and you remember that uh, you know the slope of this, the slope of this actually gives you the field. If you remember, I told you once, the slope is actually d e c by d x. Of course, you have to multiply one by q because you know the energy and electron volt and volt. So this is your slope, and this will be equal to field. This will be equal to your field in a semiconductor. Please remember that. Okay, all right. So now we come to the next. Uh, we are looking here. So, this component will be equal to the drift component which is q mu n of x into field. The field is constant because the slope is constant. Okay. So, q is of course gone. So, now what we do is um, you remember from the previous uh, page n of x is equal to n c exponential of Fermi level which is constant minus e of c x by k t. Let us take a derivative because this term is a derivative. So, I will take a derivative d of n x by d x is equal to n c. I take a derivative of this, what will happen is that it will be minus 1 by k t 
it is multiplied of course, okay. it is multiplied here into uh, it is the derivative of e to the power constant minus x by k t actually in a way. right? So, it will be e exponential of same thing e f minus e c x by k t. So, you know if I take this quantity away on the other side, if I take this quantity here minus 1 by k b t, then you see this quantity is actually this, can you see that? So, what I can do is that I can replace this by n of x, what, what I mean is d n x by d x or you know what I can do is basically I can remove everything here, I can just put it as n of x is equal to d n by d x the derivative. Okay. I can do that. Okay. Also, if you recall actually in one of the in a previous uh, I think in the last class when we discussed this, you remember the diffusion current of electron actually is, uh, is positive here and the drift current actually will be uh, you know the, the field you have to look at the field here actually. So, for example, I look at the field here, uh, the field is in this direction which means the electrons are actually going to uh, flow in this direction, okay. the electrons are going to flow actually in this direction. So, uh, the current will be in the positive direction, okay. uh, but that direction will not matter so much now here because we can take the modulus I mean it is the, it's the eventually it is the, it's the value the absolute magnitude of the current that we are trying to equate. Um, because electrons will try to diffuse from this side to this side which means current will be this way and electrons will try to come drift from this side to this side which means currents will be this way. So, they will eventually balance out. Okay. So, the drift current is positive and the diffusion current is negative. Hmm. Now, I basically have to equate this quantity with this quantity right? and I told you that field, the field actually is nothing but 1 by q d e c x by d x, you agree? d e c x by d x, okay? that is your field. Here actually I actually had not written one small thing here, this actually should be sorry huh? d e c x should be there actually, because this expression looks like uh, I would say say you know alpha e to the power some sort of say k minus x by m some constant. Okay, suppose this is constant okay, a. So, if you take a derivative of this function d of d x okay, and this is suppose f of x, this is something like this actually. So, this is the same thing as this function. So, when you take a derivative of n of x with respect to x, you know this there will be an extra this term that was missing actually in my previous equation, this term will be there because you know this equation for example, will be a uh, you know uh, 1 by minus m into d of f x by d x into e to the power k minus f f x by m it is something like that. right? So, basically you will have a term uh, of e to the power uh, d, the der derivative of the conduction band here which because you are trying to differentiate this expression here. So, that I missed out in my previous expression anyways. So, now we have this expression for d n of d x and for field I know this is the expression. right? So, we can now actually substitute the values and go to the next point which is d n into uh, this value right d n x this value. So, I will take that value which is um, which is sorry n of x okay, minus um, let me see again go back to the previous page uh, one sec here yeah. So, it will be minus 1 by k t into the derivative of conduction band. Okay. So, that will be minus 1 by k t into the derivative of the conduction band here will be equal to if I go back to the previous page you know um, if I go back to the previous page here this is q is already cancelled. So, it is mobility times the charge n x times the field okay? mobility times charge times field. So, that will be mobility times charge times field and field is 1 by q d e c x by d x. Okay? So, n x and n x cancels out d c x d c x cancels out and there is a negative sign actually this negative sign is extra it will also get cancelled out which I did not cancel out in the last page because you know uh, the total diffusion the total drift plus diffusion j sorry 
j diffusion plus j drift is equal to 0 and j diffusion is q dn dnx by dx this is equal to k mu uh, n x into field is equal to 0. So, if I basically equate them out here there will be a negative term here which I did not write in the previous slide ok because anyways we are taking magnitude. So, that sign will not import matter so much here. So, there will be a negative sign here actually. So, that negative will cancel out here ok. So, the negative will cancel out here. What remains from this equation above from this equation above is d n 1 by k t is equal to mu by q. What it means is d n by mu is equal to k t by q, but k t by q is a constant which is the thermal energy at room temperature is 0 0.026. So, I can write d n is equal to some constant k t by q times mu of electron of course, mu n is mu of electron. For holes you have the same relation d p diffusion coefficient of holes is equal to k t by q into mobility of holes mu p ok. So, this is called Einstein relation and we derived it by equating the drift and diffusion component of the current ok. Uh, what it means is that what it means is that your diffusion coefficient is actually proportional to your mobility of course, this is a thermal constant here right. So, if your diffusion coefficient is high it means your mobility also is high ok. So, this diffusion coefficient comes in diffusion current if you remember it is q d n d n by d x and this comes in the drift current q mu n field. So, because your higher diffusion coefficient means the mobility is higher and vice versa a higher diffusion current because of this high also means that the drift current will be higher. This is called Einstein relation and is very important because if you are given only d n the value of d n suppose is given to be you know say 30 um, units for example, now you can calculate mobility out from there right. You can calculate mobility by d n by k t by q and k t by q is known. So, you can calculate it out. So, that is a very powerful equation to relate drift and diffusion components ok. So, now we are done with that ok. So, now what we have studied in the last couple of lectures we have talked about carrier mobility. This is a recap of what we have learned. We have learned about carrier mobility. We discussed that carrier mobility is essentially nothing but the slope of velocity and field relation. If you are applying an external field the electrons will keep accelerating. How fast are they accelerating? What is the rate of change of velocity with the field that is your mobility ok. After some time mobility will saturate and you will get a saturation velocity. So, that means no matter how higher how high a field you are applying your mobility will no longer increase uh, you no longer be there your velocity of the carriers will saturate. Velocity of carriers will saturate and that is called saturation velocity and when we saturation velocity kicks in it is a high field regime as long as velocity and field are linearly proportional it is low field regime called mobility. Mobility is dictated by something like q tau by m where m is the effective mass. So, a lower effective mass material will have higher mobility and hence higher current because mobility also dictates current and this tau is actually the mean scattering time the time between two subsequent scattering you know when electrons move they get scattered from primarily phonons which are vibrating atoms and also ionized impurities because they have a coulombic attraction or repulsion on the carriers. So, because of ionized impurity and phonon scattering you have a mean scattering time that is decided by that phonon scattering will decrease you know the mobility with temperature ionized scattering will have the opposite effect. So, that we studied mobility we studied velocity saturation and we studied drift and diffusion current right this is drift is field component diffusion is concentration gradient driven. So, there is a drift and diffusion component there they might coexist and in equilibrium if they are equal we derive that expression between d n and the mu this relation is always valid it is not only valid when drift and diffusion are equal, but this in this relation in general is always valid is called Einstein relation. So, we have completed that now the next big topic that we have to read and understand is called recombination. What does recombination mean? Recombination means that if you have an electron and if you have a hole they will recombine that is one thing ok they will recombine because a valence band from the valence this is conduction band this is valence band. If electron might go from here to there and leave behind a hole that is the generation of electron hole pair and this electron might fall back and again fill up the hole here and that is called recombination that energy might go out as a light or that energy might go out as a heat to the crystal it is called phonon emission ok. 
only electrons and holes do not need to recombine, there might be other things that might also help in this recombination. Okay. A perfect material is not possible, there will always be something called traps. Traps are actually like defects in the crystal, defects, dislocations might also lead to traps, dislocations are missing line of atoms. So, all these defects, dislocations, you know, they relate to traps, and these traps are actually physically they might be an empty space, they might be a dangling bond, they might be impurities, they might be interstitial vacancies, so many things are there, there might be a defect there. Right. So, these traps can also take part in recombination. For example, an, an, a trap might be there, a physical a trap might be there which might trap an electron. So, it is called an electron trap. Right. What does it mean actually? And these are very important in practical devices. So, for example, I draw the band gap, conduction band, valence band. Okay, I am not drawing the Fermi level here, but just conduction band, valence band. Ideally, this part should be forbidden gap there should not be anything here, it is a clean band gap you know the forbidden gap. But in reality there might be energy trap energy states here, these are called E t energy trap energy states, there might be many trap energy states throughout, these are energy trap states. Okay. What does it mean? These are energy levels, these are energy levels that correspond to some traps. So, physically there might be traps in the crystal, there might be a defect there might be an impurity and so dangling bond and so on those are physical traps. They manifest themselves in the energy band gap as energy states within the band gap. Okay. They are trap energy states, they are trap energy states and they will manifest themselves as some discrete energy levels inside the band gap. So, suppose we do not talk about so many traps, suppose I have conduction band here. I have a valence band here, but suppose there is a trap energy level here. So, then electron that are there in the conduction band, some of them might get trapped here, they will become negatively charged and they will get trapped here. So, it will reduce the electron concentration then, then what you are desiring because they are traps, we call them you know compensating uh, traps, they will compensate for example. Okay. There might be traps also which might have already electrons in them and they might emit electrons back in the conduction band. We call them electron emission traps that are em emitting the electrons, they are called electron emission traps. They might be capturing the electrons, we call them electron capture traps. Right? These trap states, please remember these traps are actually physically there in the crystal in the form of dangling bonds, impurities, interstitials, defects, dislocations and so on. In energy band gap, they manifest as some distinct trap level within the band gap. Okay. And because of their presence, electrons and holes might get recombined with the, within these traps. So, you see traps might either capture some electrons or they might emit some electrons. Similarly, they might capture some holes, they might capture some holes or they might, they might be holes and they might emit some holes. So, in general there is capture of both electrons and holes and there is emission of both electrons and holes. Okay. So, electron can be captured, hole can be captured, electron can be emitted, holes can be emitted by these different trap levels. It depends on the position of the trap with respect to the conduction or valence band inside the band gap. right? And then there are trap energy levels, you know if for simplicity you might assume that there is only one trap energy level for example, for electron. Okay. Now, these what you might ask why are these important? These are important because in real devices and you see many of the real devices are based on PN junction. We will come to PN junction in another one or two class maybe. PN junction is a fundamental building block of things like BJT, things like LED, things like solar cell and things like many of the uh, in the photo detectors. Okay. So, many things are actually dependent on PN junction. So, in an operation of a PN junction, this kind of traps that are there are actually very important because they contribute to current which you must you must in include while you design the device or understand the device. That is why we have to understand this okay. and that is why I am talking about recombination. First we will talk about say electron capture, okay, electron capture. There is a rate at which electron capture will take place, rate of electron capture, okay. the rate at which electrons are captured. So, you have conduction band here, 
you have valence band here right and then you might have a trap energy here ok. So, if there is a trap energy here the probability I will come to the electron capture and rate very soon the probability that that energy level trap energy level E t is occupied the probability that the trap energy level is occupied by some electron already is given by f of E t which is this from it again 1 by 1 plus exponential of E t minus E f by k t. This gives you the probability that electron is basically you know there is already uh, a, this trap is occupied by electron for example ok this is trap is occupied by electron this is a probability. So, 1 minus f of E t will be the probability that the trap is empty ok the trap is empty and suppose n t per centimeter cube is the number of traps or the trap density. So, if I say the trap density is say 10 to the power 15 per centimeter cube in it means in the silicon crystal I have 10 to the power 15 centimeter cube it is that this is the density of the traps this is the density of the traps. So, you know I was talking about electron capture first the rate at which electrons will be captured rate of electron capture ok this rate of electron capture is R a for example I will tell it as R a the rate at which electrons can be captured by these trap states this has to be proportional to few things. First of all this has to be proportional to how many empty trap states are there ok this is proportional to how many empty trap states are there which can capture the number of empty trap states is the no total number of trap states is n t and out of this this fraction is unoccupied. So, the total number of trap states which can capture the electron is n t 1 minus f this I am writing as f ok. So, the rate at which electron will be captured depends on how many empty traps are there only empty traps can capture. So, that is n t 1 minus f of course, this whole thing also depends on how many free electrons are there if the semiconductor does not have free electron then they will not there is nothing to capture no. So, it depends on free electron concentration n and the and you know if this is a trap for example, if this is the trap physically I am talking about this will trap the electron then around it there you can define an area a cross sectional area it is a circle I am so not very good at drawing of say sigma n centimeter square this is the area this is the area through which if there is any electron that passes it will be trapped here you know this is the influence area you can say this is called the cross section the trap cross section area the cross section area of the trap ok this is the cross section area of the trap and within this if the electron passes through it will be captured by the trap. So, if I talk about this in 3D then this is the area if I talk about in a sort of a tube tubular structure in one second the volume swept away by the electron is this over through which electron this is the trap for example, electron is coming in one second this is the volume through which the electrons all the ensemble of electrons will pass through and that is given by that is given by the area times the velocity with which electrons are moving. So, area times the velocity will sweep basically in every unit second this is the volume this is the volume of space which the electron ensemble will sweep through ok. Though this is the area uh, this is the volume through which the electron ensemble will, will sweep through. So, the proportionality constant here is this actually what is the volume this sweeping through. So, this is given by area times velocity area is sigma n and velocity is given by some thermal velocity because it is random. So, I can write this as R a is equal to sigma n which is the area times velocity. So, this is the volume through which the electrons are sweeping through times the free carrier concentration because more the carriers more will be the trapping times how many empty states are there this ok. Similarly, I can define R b which is the rate of electron emission for electron emission it depends on how many field traps are there because they will be emitting the electron number of field trap is n t into f and then there is nothing else there is a constant here I will call it as E n which is the emission constant. Similarly, I can define R c which is hole capture and R d which is hole emission something similar. So, in equilibrium in equilibrium 
when I say in equilibrium it means it is equilibrium ok that is you know what is equilibrium. In equilibrium um, you know you have a conduction band here, you have valence band here. The rate of electron emission and capture into the conduction band will be the same which means R A will be equal to R B. Rate at which electrons are emitted and electrons are captured into the conduction band will be the same. Rate at which holes are captured and holes are emitted from the valence band also has to be same. So, R C is equal to R D. So, you can do these equations and then you can find out the constants <coughs> excuse me you can find out the constant which was there in the previous slide. So, here this constant was there no that we can find out and uh, so that is one one thing. So, you can do some simplification and math and there is another math though you can assume that you are say shining light you are shining light and you are generating excess carrier when you shine light you are generating excess carriers ok and those excess carriers will recombine and decay actually I will come to that. So, generating excess carrier for example, so the suppose I am shining light and G L is the generation in the, the generation rate at which you are generating the light uh, the photo carriers optically. When you shine light excess electrons will go from valence band to conduction band and create electron hole pair. The unit of this is per centimeter cube per second. So, this is the rate at which you are generating electron for example, or holes pairs ok. So, if you are shining light then the total rate of generation G L minus the rate at which you are R A minus R B this is the rate at which you are producing electrons this is the total rate of produ uh, optical producing this is the total rate at which you are losing this is capture minus this is emission this is cap this is capture minus this is emission. So, this gives you the total capture or to total recombination this gives you the generation. So, this is the rate at which this is the rate at which d n by d t it over time how you are generating and similarly for hole it will be g l minus r c minus r d this will be equal to whole thing will be equal to the rate at which you are generating holes ok. In, in thermal steady state in steady state not equilibrium this is steady state which means steady state means that there is no time variation in steady state there is no time variation. So, d n by d t will be equal to 0 d p by d t also has to be 0 which means r a minus r b will have to be equal to r c minus r d under this case. So, if you do this and you put that in the previous equations that we have obtained here based on this then you can get something like this you can get something like ok ok I will explain to that. P and N are the electron total electron total hole concentration this is the intrinsic carrier concentration N i this is electron concentration this is hole concentration this is intrinsic carrier concentration tau is some kind of lifetime I will come to that very quickly ok tau is some kind of lifetime and this is the total recombination rate. The rate at which electrons are or holes are recombining either with traps or amongst themselves, but typically it is in this context they are recombining with traps you know this is the total rate at which they are recombining with traps this is per centimeter cube per second. This is equal to 1 by lifetime. So, if your lifetime is long they will recombine fast ok if your lifetime is long the recombination rate will be small ok. And then this is P n P times n the product of P n n minus n i square you might say that P n should be equal to n i square. So, this should be equal to 0 no actually this P n n are non equilibrium. So, there is light shining and there is excess P excess n. So, it is not equal to n i square here ok. And the last thing today in the class is that this tau this is lifetime actually is defined by 1 by sigma into v t h into n. Here are some assumptions are taken the cross section area of electron trap is equal to cross section area of hole trap is equal to sigma that is the assumption I am taking here. And the velocity of thermal velocity of electron thermal velocity of hole is the same which is I am taking here and this is the, um, the electron concentration here. Uh, actually uh, this is the lifetime that is in seconds and it defines many important parameters as we shall see in the next class ok. So, here I will end the class here today. So, today we have studied about recombination uh, we introduced the concept of electron and hole capture uh, and so now in the next class we will move forward and we will try to do some more uh, analysis and understanding of this this recombination ok this trap related recombination that happens in semiconductor and how they are actually going to find you know application or how they we have to in understand them in the context of device ok. So, I will come to that in the next class ok thank you for your time.